that's a pretty good bio, huh? <laughs> I got off of YouTube. <laughs> if it ain't true, it's YouTube's fault. How y'all doing? Good. All right. Good. I'm just, let me just dig y'all, look y'all in. Is my husband here yet? Okay, he ain't here yet. I like the way you look. Yeah, you brother. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm no. just telling you that. I got my husband's friends right on the back. See those three people right there? They're going to tell everything I say. Lord, let me tell you what your wife and this one right here will tell what they don't, so don't worry about it. I'm just saying, you just have a good look. It's just beauty, that's all. Nikki, don't you have a good look? Look at her. See? See, Nikki said he looked at you too, so there you go. Must be good. Some brother up there. Hey, now everybody look at him. Come on. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I'm just saying, my daughter needs a husband. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If you married, it's all good. Just have your brother call me. Three, five, six. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, should I have said all of that? Like, didn't we just get, didn't like Barney, what's his name, but Rubble get in trouble today again for sexual harassment or somebody else? What's his name? Barney Rubble? Al, not Al Sharpton. No, Franken. Al Franken, yeah, yeah. News report Robert Richard said Al Sharpton was sexually harassing people at race and reconciliation, right? It's all good. It's all true, right? Well, I am excited to be here. Thank you to uh, Samantha and Amy and Jennifer and uh, on the uh, Stronger Together side for daring to have conversations like this, which can be a little unsettling sometimes. Even my husband said, what? You said, what? Races at home, are you talking about me, baby? I was, but we'll talk about that later. Because <laughs> uh, um, this, this is important. This matters that we have this. And so let me tell you why. I think I shared this with Amy and uh, Samantha. Let me tell you why I picked this topic. Um, and it was because right here in this room, when Race and Reconciliation started, uh, how long ago? Where's Julie? How long ago was that? August. Okay, so two years ago, I may have come to the first or second one, and um, we are in this, it was small, it may have been, I don't know, 15 people there, <clears throat> and this um, white sister, we're, so Julie was having this conversation, and this white sister, um, I don't have a poker face, so, <laughs> so y'all see me put my head down, this, you know, just pray for me. Um, and so this white sister said, you know, essentially, we're having this conversation, which was, you know, really getting authentic, one of Dr. Je Jessica's favorite words, really getting authentic. And this white sister said, you know, that she hadn't experienced racism or she didn't grow up like this, and she may be in this room tonight, so if you are, this is even better. Uh, didn't feel, you know, racist or didn't have any prejudices, biases, didn't grow up like that. And so, and y'all, I think, I'm six feet tall, and I think my head just went all the way to the floor, because I was like, what the heck? I said, heck, y'all, okay? <laughs> what the heck? What the Hades? I'm like, why are we here? So, when it was my turn, because I think I was like, oh, this is crazy. And I think Julie let her off, you know, I'm going to say that to Julie, because I said that to Julie before. So, I think Julie let her off in, in that conversation. I was like, okay, no, we got to, you know, hear it. So, I said to her, I said, some other things, and then I said, you know, uh, I don't believe you, essentially, because we were in a place of truth and authenticity. I don't believe you, and uh, it's like being racist at home and revolutionary in the street. So this group is called Race and Reconciliation. This ain't ice cream and cupcakes, so we're not coming here to talk about food. We're coming here to talk about how to push through this thing that has plagued our country and continents for eons so how to really have this authentic conversation and so it got to the core of me it got on my last nerve that someone would say that and so come to this place where we're having this conversation and just kind of say you know my rose colored glasses are, are okay and not be bold enough with yourself uh, um, what's the um, 
guy who wrote Good to Great says you need to turn the mirror of responsibility on yourself. So, so not be bold enough to turn that mirror on herself and say, listen, we got some challenges and that's why we're here. And so that's why I said that it's like being racist at home and revolutionary in the street. So you can, you know, you say, we all say, I'm going to talk about all of us, and I got Brian in the back. <clears throat> If I say something you don't agree with, don't worry. I'm out of here at 8.02. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and don't worry, I'm going to talk about Brian's people too, so he already knows, so we're cool. Um, so it's, it's like that we have this conversation around our dinner table, and then we come out and, you know, even in a setting like this, and say, I just, I haven't had that experience. I haven't seen that. If only you could get your college degree. You know, so we, so we do that. We do that to ourselves. We, we don't turn the mirror on ourselves. We turn it back on somebody else and say, if only you would. So that's where this came from. And so I don't remember when then further Julie and I had a conversation because I was getting frustrated. And I have, we have a, tr a connected friend um, that brought us together to say, you know, where, how can we do this and do this better for Robin's sake. I ain't got nothing to do with y'all. This was for Robin because I needed to come back to race and reconciliation because I was pissed about the conversations that were not happening. So here we are in this place and not having this conversation. And so this kind of led to this thing. And so when Samantha reached out and said, would you do this? And then I talked to Amy, I said, well, okay, this is the creator saying this is the time to have this conversation. So I'll tell you, it may get a little bit uncomfortable. And that's so cool because that's when I think that we push through and push through and push through and get to our best. So it's, a, it's the old joke, <clears throat> meaning I made it up and it's funny, okay? So it's the old joke that, uh, what do you call a butterfly who never leaves its cocoon? It's a butterfly, <laughs> right? Because if you don't leave your cocoon, then you know? All right, so what do you call a ship that never leaves the harbor? <laughs> okay, that's probably right. A museum, that's not where ships are built for, right? So you have to push through. So even those high waves or that uncomfortableness getting out of your cocoon, you have to push through. And that's what I just want to challenge us, each of us to do, is to hold that mirror. Jim Collins, that's who wrote that book, Good to Great. Hold that mirror up to ourselves and push through. And if you don't like what you're looking, what you're, what's looking back at you, go get another mirror. I mean, you can spend your money all day long <laughs> saying it's, it's the mirror, right? Right? All right, so is everybody good with that? Is that sister here? I know all she wants to come I'm kidding. I don't even know who it was. It doesn't matter. That conversation was for me. Oh, that's my smart, fine husband. Hey, baby. Y'all say hi. I was talking to, I was trying to get, see the, the dude on the end here, baby? I was trying to get him for Natalie, but I don't know if he married or not. See, that's what I'm saying. That could have been our son-in-law, baby. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. Okay, so, Julie, will you get the light here? Okay. Uh, so a lot of you uh, heard, heard in that that I do a lot of talk about, um, History. I love African American history. I love my grandmother say, I just don't know what to baby to tell people about you. You got a sister, brother who's a pastor and a sister who's a photographer and, and a, a sister who's a cook and this. I don't know. I say, Granny, just tell people, just tell, just say I tell people I tell stories about black people. Just you know, and most of them are true. So that's what I do. I tell stories about black people and most of them are true. So this um, I like Pensacola and I love uh, my office and my work uh, and some future work that I'll talk about is in Belmont de Villiers. And the story of uh, Belmont de Villiers it has been absolutely amazing. Um, and so since I've been in Pensacola, um, let, let me back up. Uh, so th this is where I do my work. And what I like doing based on the way I was brought up, uh, my family values, education and all of that is ensuring that there's diversity in issues, ideas, and individuals. And so Belmont de Villiers does that for me in my work 
and in my heart. So it, it's this um, amazing place. And in Pensacola, so this is all of, of Pensacola. Let me see. Yay. So, so lately, with the diversity of issues, individuals, and ideas, I've been adding images. So the last, um, since about 2012, started really doing some intensive work on Belmont de Villiers, particularly the um, mid-19th century up until the mid-20th century. I've been kind of stopping about the 1940s, 1950s. Um, and <clears throat> so what I see a lot of is what I see a lot of today, although I would say in the last few years it's changing, not as fast as Robin would like it, but it is, it, and not as fast as it needs to, period. So, but we, you know, so images, so when you see this is the 1940s guidebook uh, to Pensacola, and I dare say that a lot of the, what you see then is a lot of the same images that you see today, people being really happy um, and doing things and engaging, and they don't look like what Pensacola looks like but they look happy and this is what we're doing. And a lot of people say, well, Robin, that was then, that was 1940. And so I wonder what people are gonna say in 2000, I don't know, 3017. Anybody else besides me gonna be here? I just, I just, I just had some wheat grass, so I'm trying to do uh, That really is, well, it ain't marijuana, I spilled it on myself, but that really is what's on my dress, wheat grass. Um, so I wonder if they're gonna say that same thing about us. You know, when they look back at our history, they say, well, that was then, you know, that they didn't have it. The same thing that we're saying there, that they're kind of giving this excuse. Let's see here. And so this is Belmont de Villiers on this 1896 map. This is Belmont de Villiers. And you can see where it is um, growing back from that 1885 map. Uh, and this is Belmont, this is the, the, what we call the block. So how many of you have been to um, Blue Dot? Yeah, keep your hand up. I'm just going to do a mental snapshot for Byron. Okay, put your hand down. <laughs> Let me do one for Nisi. Okay, how many of y'all have been to, uh, oh, you already <laughs> the dwarf. I already got my chicken people raising the hand. Look at Bev and, Bev and all them raising the hand, all right? All right, those are our two oldest restaurants there. Uh, over, let's see here, the Dwarf, 50 years old, the Blue Dot, 60 something years old. They're in like their second location there. Um, okay, so our um, five sisters, so y'all know where this is, okay? All right, let me see the party people. How many have been to Chizuku? Uh huh. I'm taking names, uh huh. All right, they'll open up till we go to bed, so I know y'all. Okay, so this is, this is Belmont de Villiers. And so, uh, a little bit closer. So, uh, when I started delving into it, I started looking at how we look at images and what those images say. So, when we put out information, we're still a very visual society. So, when we put out information, that is what stays in people's minds. So, you may remember what's the other thing? You may remember what I say, but you're really going to remember what I do, and that's that visual representation of my words are going to stay in your mind. And so. Um, so, uh, let me, I'm going to go past this real quick here. So, re please remind me to come back to that because I want to show you that, but I, I want to go past that for now. So when I started digging into Belmont de Villiers, images like this came up. So when people think of black folk in Pensacola, they think Chappie James, they think who else? C, C, okay. So late they've been thinking John Sunday, uh, and then everybody else is sports, right? So kind of this recent sports deal. And so there are so many amazing people um, who have made the way that if we don't consider this visual conversation, then the conversations that go on at the dinner table will continue to go on at the dinner table if you don't have uh, the knowledge. And Malcolm X said, if you don't come into the full knowledge. So this is a fun one here. Let me just point this one out here. This is Joe Moore's funeral home in 1938. Some of you may have seen it, especially because a lot of these are from UWF archives uh, in, in 1938, which is some brothers standing there in front of their car, say, Sharp 2. 
can't see it on the deal. This is John Sunday. A lot of you may know him from the house that got destroyed uh, there. And this is my other husband, Dan, DJ Cunningham, Daniel Cunningham. He died before Denzel, my other husband, was born. Uh, that's, that's him. I was just afraid to meet him because I know he's going to be like five feet, you know, down here. Okay, baby, I'm gonna go. My baby's saying, just keep going. So, so when we don't have the conversation about image, then we miss out on things like this. Businesses that uh, dot uh, the surface here that help to make Pensacola what it what it is, including. Um, this is uh, Dr. E. St. Clair Thomas. If you're familiar with Jack and Jill, his niece is the one, Marion Stubbs. Marion Stubbs Thomas is the one who, uh, uh, one of the co-founders of Jack and Jill. So he was a podiatrist uh, right here. And when they tried to run folks off, of African Americans off of um, Palafox Street, he stayed and Sam Charles stayed. Sam Charles also had a uh, a shoe place which he turned over to his son on North the Village, but he, uh, those were two African Americans who stayed down there. I'd love to ask them why uh, and how they, how that, that happened. Um, uh, Mosquito, uh, Dr. James Popenhorn, a lot of you may know that they went to FAMU, Popenhorn Village. Uh, this is his father here who discovered Westwell Lotion. Gulf Cleaners, um, the, uh, uh, Lord, I just forgot the name of the pharmacy. Jones Pharmacy here, DJ Cunningham's. Um, anyway, uh, businesses that, that we miss. We end up missing the military conversation. Uh, like the Florida Guards, who in 1900 were one of the precursors to the National Guards. Uh, uh, we end up missing folks here like World War II uh, veterans, um, who the US, the colored USO was right in Belmont de Villiers area. Um, we end up missing this. This was in 1916 when the when they went after Pancho Villa, P Pancho Villa, um, uh, um, the 10th Cavalry, who we know as the Buffalo Soldiers. They had a.